Good morning, children, and may God bless you. My name is St. Mary of the Cross, and this is my story. I was born in Melbourne in 1842. Good morning, I am Mr. McKillop. We were Scottish migrants, and Mary was the eldest of eight children. The McKillop children had a hard life, mostly due to my many business failures. I tried hard, but I still couldn't afford school for my family. Though I was an excellent teacher, I taught my children how to read, write, and add up. Good morning, I am Mrs. McKillop. When Mary was 14, she began work as a clerk to support the family. Later, when she was 18, she went to Panola to be the governess for her cousins. My golly, they were wild, but I soon had them in shape. While I was at Panola, I met Father Woods. We got on famously. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Father. I think I found the site to start our new school. That's wonderful, Father. When can we start? It's not much, it's just an old stable, but I think you'll do the job. I'll get right on preparing the lessons. Let's do our ABCs, okay? A, B, C, D. In 1867, we founded the Sisters of St. Joseph. I was the very first Mother Superior. I was only 24 at the time. Within two years, there were 127 nuns in 17 schools. I loved teaching and the children loved all the sisters. Most of these little children had no hope of getting an education except from my sisters. The sisters were very busy. One of my little tricks was to reward the children with sweets which I carried in my pocket. Seven, eight, nine. Things were going really well until the bishop called Mary in. Sister Mary, come in here for a moment. I'd like to discuss matters concerning the sisters. They are a little too brazen for my taste and some of them can barely read themselves. Something must be done immediately. The bishop wanted to take control of the sisters, but Mary wouldn't hear of it. The sisters were devastated by what could happen next. Excommunication. It was the darkest time in Mary's life, but she kept her faith, even though she had to leave the sisters and could not go to Mass. Thankfully, the bishop changed his mind eight months later, just before he died. After this, it was clear. I needed to speak with the Pope to have our rule officially approved. In those days, there were no telephones, so I set sail for Rome. Mary put her case to the Pope, and he agreed. The Sisters of St. Joseph were now officially approved by Rome. Before returning to Australia, Mary visited Scotland and Ireland. There she found 15 young women who agreed to join her order. Over the next decade, Mary and the sisters set up schools and convents across Australia and New Zealand. <laughs>